Okay, here's a short lesson on U substitution using definite integrals. Um, first of all, let's recall U substitution, where the most important part is probably picking out what we're going to let U equal. So what do we let U equal? Well, usually it's an inner function. So in this case, we have this 1 plus x cubed inside of the square root. And so that is a really good thing to let our U be. And a way we check it is we take the derivative du of each side. And then we check to make sure, oh, look, outside here matches our dx. Now, as you can see with u substitution, there are two parts. And I'm just going to rewrite this integral so it makes it look a little more clear. So we're going to have this with the inner function, 1 plus x cubed. And then we're going to have the part two, which is the dx or du, and that's going to be 3x squared dx. So as you can see, here is going to be your u, and then right here is going to be your part two, which is your 3x squared dx. And then you are going to do some substitutions. So the u goes inside, 1 plus 3x is u. And we're going to rewrite this to the 1 half. And then all of this just becomes our du. Now, we cannot put our 0 to 2 on here because these are limits for x. So these are our x equals limits. We are in u now. So now we have to find our u limits. And be careful because once you leave your x, never go back. You need to focus on u. So if you leave your x, Never ever go back to your x. Focus on u instead. Here we go. So we are going to find out what our x limits are. Don't forget that u was this. So to find our x limits, we're going to use that u. So we had two x's. We had x equals 0, and we had x equals 2. And we got those from here, x equals 0 and x equals 2. But we need to go to u. So and remember, u equaled 1 plus x cubed. So u equals, we're going to find our u's, 1 plus x cubed. And x was 0 cubed. And then 1 plus x cubed. And in this case, x was 2. And we're going to cube that. So we have our two x limits now. This is a 1. And this is 8 plus 1, which is 9. So if you notice, our new limits are now 1 and 9. So we have a u in here inside of our function. We have du, and we have u limits 1 and 9. At this point, we're going to integrate. And let's make sure that we do the proper notation, so that way everyone can follow our work. And the proper notation is this. Once we integrate, the integral sign is gone. We're going to integrate u to the 1 half, which means we add 1. That's going to give us u to the 3 over 2, and then we're going to divide by 3 over 2, which is the same thing as multiplying by 2 thirds, and we're going to integrate that from 1 to 9. Using the fundamental theorem of calculus, we are now going to do the finish the integration, 2 thirds, or the substitution, and it is u to the 2 thirds. So the first number goes in as the upper limit, which is 9 to 3 over 2 minus, then the lower limit goes in, and that is 1 to the 3 over 2. Now, remember, this is just a root. 2 is the root, so we can break 9 into 3 times 3, and we need 3 of them. So that gives us 2 thirds times 27, and this is just 1 times 1, so the root is 1. 1 to the third is 1. And that gives us 26 times 2 thirds, or 52 over 3. So that's the first problem. Now, notice how once I went to u, I never, ever went back to x. OK? So we're always remember, once you leave your x, never go back. Focus on u. And you never want to put a 0 and a 2, which are your x limits and your u. When you're doing u, you have to have all your u limits. 
All right, let's look at another one. Next one we're gonna look at is this one. Now, uh, at first I'm not really sure what to do, like what is my U? But if you think about it, anytime you see a quotient like this, if you can't break it up, which you can't because there's a term in the denominator, you're like, oh, that's a quotient, which just means division. And anytime I see a quotient, I wanna think, ooh, ln, possibly. Because remember, if you have if the function is ln of x, then the derivative of that function is one over x. See how the x is in the denominator? And we have an x in the denominator right here. So that's what we're gonna think of, and that's what we're gonna use. So let's make sure we do this correctly. U equals one plus five x squared, and then du equals. Now we're gonna take the derivative of this. So the derivative of one is zero, and you have 10x dx. Now if you notice over here in the numerator, you have an x dx, but you don't have a 10. That means we can replace this, but not the 10. So in order to fix that, we're gonna divide both sides by 10, and that's the same as multiplying by 1 10. So right now, we have 1 over 10 du equals x dx. I'm gonna rewrite this integral. You do not have to rewrite the integral, but I'm gonna rewrite it for you so you can see what's going on better. So zero to one, we're still in x. And I'm gonna split up this. So I'm gonna write one over one plus five x squared times x, like x over one dx. Just, to, just so you can see that we have our x dx, which matches this. And then we have our one over u, which matches this. So I'm gonna rewrite the integral, right? So it's one over u, because it's one over this, which is u. And then x dx is just what? du. But don't forget, we also have one tenth du. So what we could do, let me write one more step, is if instead if I did it here, I could say x dx is all replaced by this. So I put one over 10 du. But remember that constant, gross, we're just gonna pull that constant out in front, okay? So you don't need to leave it there because you don't have to integrate a constant. We're just gonna put it out, out in front because you're gonna be just multiplying by that. So the only thing we haven't done is we haven't done the limits. So if you notice, we have limits that we need to do right here and right here because we have x limits, but we don't have u limits. So we need to go get u limits right now. Alrighty, so we have x equals what? So x equals zero and x equals one, but we need u limits. So we're changing our upper and lower bounds since u equals one plus five x squared, then that means u equals one plus five times zero squared and one plus five times one squared. So this is gonna give us one and this is five plus one equals six. So our new u limits go from our zero gets replaced by a one and our one gets replaced by a six. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to integrate this. So I'm gonna erase this because it's bothering me that it's there. There you go, so it's a little cleaner looking. And so now we can actually integrate. So we have the one tenth is still out there. And then we're gonna integrate one over u. Now, if you look back over here, you notice that f prime x is one over x and then f is ln x and don't forget your absolute value bars. That's important since we're going backward. We don't wanna actually accidentally sub in a negative u. So we are gonna integrate this and it becomes parentheses, so we can multiply the one tenth through, l n u, and this is also important to write our limits of integration from, oops, I did a highlight back to that, from one to six. So that's gonna give us one tenth, and then we have ln six, 
And we do not need to leave the absolute value there since six is a positive number, so we're good. Minus ln1. Ooh, and look at this. You should remember this from your first five, but ln1 is zero. So that's going to give us ln6 over 10. So remember, it's always important to be careful about picking out your u. So usually when you take your u, I can just look at it and go, hey, there's x squared. The derivative of x squared is u. And so I know I can integrate there.